Bonnie, thanks for joining me here. This will be my third video on this radio. Um, uh, let's see, I've been thinking hard about it since I was in here working last. And I've become a little bit concerned about the fact that there's just really nothing coming out of the speaker except for a hum. And I'm pretty sure the field coil on its own could make this big speaker hum. <laughs> So I'm starting to wonder if there isn't something about the speaker, about the output transformer, or something like that. I want to convince myself that the speaker is in functional functional condition. Now, how am I going to do that? It's a little tricky. If this was just an ordinary permanent magnet speaker, I got a little bit of a better angle on it here. If this was a uh, ordinary permanent magnet speaker, it would be very easy to test it very quickly. It's not though. This has got a coil up here instead of a permanent magnet. The coil is uh, energized, I guess is the word for it, by the radio. Um, so with the radio off, there's no magnetism in here for the voice coil to push against. And if I put a signal on the voice coil, it's not going to do anything. I think, I don't know what else to try, I can go ahead and put a signal on the voice coil, turn on the radio to generate a current in the field coil. And then we should be able to find out if the, uh, if the speaker itself is working. Just in case it isn't. Because if it isn't, there's not much use trying to get this radio going until the speaker situation is, is, uh, is fixed. So, Let's hook up. Let's hook up my audio generator here. Switch it on. Let it warm up. We're gonna. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's enough magnetism in here for the voice coil to work against, even as it sits here. Uh, I gotta get a look at the. Uh, Voice coil leads. Let me just put this light on here. Okay, I'll use the closer, closer upper camera. Look up in there. One. Well. Okay, three terminals. Maybe that's some kind of hum thing going on there. Wish I had the schematic to look at, but I'm not sure why there's three. But anyway, it's these two on the right that are going up to the voice coil. Uh, you can see they're attached. They don't look very flexible, do they? there so I'll clip on them but I want to clip carefully onto these terminals. I don't want to pull on these wires here. Uh, that's not a good idea. You might even hear something right now. settings on the signal generator. Nothing whatsoever. A, my signal generator, like a lot of my older equipment, has wonky controls, switches and that. Not a thing. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to fire up the radio just to get a current going in the field coil and see if we can't hear something then. Okay, so the radio's in. Okay, looks okay. Looks okay. Of course, just on restricted power. 
Yeah, the speaker could start on coming on at any point. It should be once the rectifier tube warms up. It might go loud, I don't know. Oh, I heard something. No question, it's working. It's pretty faint, you know. I'm shoving a pretty good signal into it. But mind you, it is hooked up. You know, it's got a transformer winding right here, which is maybe sucking the life out of the signal I'm sending over there. Okay. So I'm reassured, everything's on here, Jimmy, don't forget this. I'm reassured that the speaker itself is functional. Nothing seriously wrong with the speaker. Of course, on these videos, I'm the speaker, and there's lots seriously wrong with me. So what, what really has me kind of stumped here is I poked around on the grids of the two output tubes and I heard absolutely nothing come out of the speaker. Either I, I failed to poke successfully. Um, for instance, I did not inject a strong enough signal. I was just using the uh, meter lead here. I should really use my finger or something like that. And... Uh, Let's repeat that stuff. Because un until I get a sense that the speaker is connected to the radio, uh, I, then I really shouldn't be doing much more to the radio. Uh, the output tubes were 6... Was it 6W6? What was it? I've forgotten now. 6V6? 6K6. 6K6, I think it was. Who knows? I don't know what tube it is. It was pin 5. 6K6. Six. Pin 5. Pin 1. No, pin 5, yeah. Grid 1, pin 5. That's right. Pin 5, I'll just do what I did last time, then we'll go from there. Okay, so picking on an output tube. Two of them are right here. Pin number five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn up the volume. Volume's up full. And uh, no luck at all. Even tapping the. Let me double check the voltage on pin 5 and I'll stick my finger on it, more or less. Less than more. My meter over there is behaving a little oddly. I expect there to be a slight negative voltage here. Relative to what? Relative to relative to the clip lead laying on not connected. Ooh. <laughs> I guess I'll I'll never feel good about doing that. Maybe that's a good thing. Okay, here we go. So there's a positive voltage there. Small positive voltage. Where is the which one's the cathode? 6K6 cathode is pin 8. Pin 8. So this is the cathode here. Whoa! How do you get that? 15 volt, 50 volt scale. Cathode. So the cathode is above ground by a lot, 35 volts above ground. 
and that makes the grid 35 volts negative relative to the cathode. It's probably due to cathode biasing. Is it the same on the other two? Because 35 sounds pretty darn high. 35 sounds like sounds like you could cut the tube off at 35. Now. Fortunately, these pins are in the same, these tubes are in the same way. Wow, it's a little awkward to get up, up in there. Oh my gosh, it's like hidden behind the uh, volume on-off control. I can't get at it. put a, a probe in there. That's disappointing. Hey, time for a tube extender. Time for a tube extender. Um, that's not the best move either on this radio, but I think that's my option. The reason I say it's not the best move is because the tube is really tucked away up here. I shut it off in case you didn't catch that. But a quick move down in here. They have a better chance. Pull them out. Is it really a 6K6? 6K6. Good guess, Jimmy. Okay. Get a tube extender. Thank you again, kind viewer, who sent me a couple of these. This is my first chance to actually use one on the radio. Okay. Pin number eight. Yeah, that's right. They number differently from above. back in. Here's hanging, everything's safe. Power back on. Voltmeter. Now the other tube was 35. Let's see if I can get my arm in here without blocking your view of the meter. Pin number eight. Get it on first. Okay, there. Nothing at all. Really? something here. It's almost as if it's not even plugged in. How about on some of the other pins? Nothing. Nothing. Tiny. I can see the heater's on. There's no doubt the tube is on. Nothing there. I would think if one of these two output tubes is, is doing its job, we would hear something coming out of the speaker. It just takes one of these. There's two of them. What are the... All those readings were kind of weird. Is there any other high voltage I can get at up here on the top? No. I'm concerned I'm, my meter's not behaving properly. Okay, we're gonna flip the radio up. I'm gonna turn it off again. I just just not see the problem is if you get something like this tipped up this far and then without you even causing it, something happens. A sudden sound comes out of the speaker or there's a pop uh, short or anything at all that might make you jump, there's a chance you're gonna drop the radio. That's the problem there. 
and uh, you know, if you're not doing it on video, maybe it's not such a bad thing. But if you're doing it on video, you really don't want a video of you dropping somebody's radio. <laughs> so okay, flip her back on. We'll just go on the power supply capacitor here. Oh, for God's sakes, I took off the ground. <laughs> okay, how many people are yelling at me on that one? Okay, back off. That's the thing about meters. You've got to hook them up. You don't hook them up, they don't work. Oh my God, if I was a surgeon, I would have killed every patient that came in my operating room this morning. Every one of them would have bit the dust. Didn't I, I think one of my recent videos was, uh, the operation was a success, but, but the patient died, okay. Calming myself down now. Here we go. This time we're going to see some some readings here. Pin number eight. We're getting that same 30 volt reading. So you know that could be okay. 6K6. What kind of bias do you want on a 6K6? 6K6. Just look down here. Plate voltage, grid number two, plate, grid number one, control, grid, bias voltage, zero volts maximum. Those are maximum, zero volts. Relative to the, to the uh, grid number one, voltage, positive bias value, zero max. So don't make this thing go positive on the grid at all. Now uh, what typical, typical, Typical down here somewhere. Where are you? Grid number one. Typical grid number one. Minus seven, minus 18, minus 21. So the higher and higher the plate voltage, the more and more bias uh, you put in the tube to sort of counteract the powerful plate voltage that's drawing electrons through the tube. So minus 21. This one's measuring at 35. So what that suggests to me is uh, there's probably a cathode resistor or resistors in here and they've gone high. Uh, the resistance has gone up, current going through the tube, pushes up the voltage drop, makes the cathode go more and more positive to the chassis, makes the grid appear negative to the cathode more and more also. 35 volts. Don't I think it says in here what the cutoff value is, does it? Maximum circuit values, maximum ratings. Just hearing some clicking coming out of the radio there. Uh, maximum grid number one voltage. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm not sure I'm reading it, minus 18. 37 milliamps maximum plate current. Well, with a very, very high bias, the tube's conduction goes very low and uh, its output could very well be cut off at this point unless we can drive a powerful signal onto the grid and kind of make it creep over that cutoff amount if you, if you can get my hand signal there. Uh, I still don't like the situation because Because, okay, so why don't we take a look at that? Let's take a look at the uh, cathode resistor and see what we can figure out here. Uh, should be able to spot it. I shouldn't really need a schematic to do that. surgeons work away they don't have a schematic do they do they actually pull up that you know I wouldn't be surprised if they do pull up uh, diagrams of uh, anatomy and things like that when they're 
burrowing deep inside your stomach or something. They probably do have a schematic of a sort that they refer to. Uh, so let's get the close-up camera on this. So that's one of the two output tube bases right there. The cathode is pin number eight. So pin number eight, I'll just point with my voltmeter here. There's the little, so that's, that's eight right there. Let me put this on it here. Eight goes back to here. That is that that's a capacitor? Oh, okay, here's its lead up here. I thought it was actually moving relative to the lead coming into the bottom of it, like the hole. But well, it's not. So this capacitor, the one I was just touching, this one here, is not actually connected there. See? There's quite a bit connected there. What I'm looking for is a resistor of fairly high wattage coming off that pin somewhere. The wire going down with insulation on it disappears out of view. There's another one that could be a lead wire. Where the heck is that going? Hey. I think, I think it's this capacitor right here. So I'm looking at the lead wire. It come, looks like it's coming out of the end of the capacitor. It seems to move with the capacitor. So, okay, so that definitely connects there to the cathode. So now that's a little small for a bypass capacitor. Does it say 0.065? Is that what it says? Some some of these ones you have to read this number here, this serial number or whatever it is, and then you have to find a reference. Exactly, is that terribly ugly looking thing? Right back here. What is that? Pretty sad to me, whatever it is, what is it? It looks it looks wrong in every which way. It doesn't look like the right size to be a capacitor or a resistor. What is it? I'm having a heck of a time doing I'm looking at the uh, computer screen, uh, my big screen here. I'm trying to do this and uh, you know, I've got the angles quite right. There, this may be a little better on me. What is that thing? Rock solid. Uh, uh. That also appears to be connected to that terminal. That could be that could be the cathode resistor. Woo. Uh. That looks just oh look at it. Oh definitely. Look at how long it is. Now I see the whole thing. Aha. Uh -huh. So they've got the cathode resistor just packed in back there. And it goes underneath the volume control. Oh yeah, no wonder I can't see anything. And then what's it doing over here? Um, I 
think these radios typically use a single, or they can use a single cathode resistor for both tubes. And then that's got to be bypassed to ground. So we'll go back and look at this piece of junk capacitor here. I follow the green wire. It's going a long ways. Well, I don't think that's ground. That looks like ground to me. at the other side of this capacitor, that center screen right now, to see if that's a ground point. Oh look, see that? If you look at the tube socket, there's no pin in that uh, particular position. So this terminal is not actually a tube terminal, it's just a spare terminal and they've connected a bunch of junk to it. But if that were a ground terminal, you'd see our wire going to ground right from it. So it's not a ground terminal. So what is going on? Follow it all the way back. Oh, that green wire has nothing to do with this capacitor. Right, this capacitor lead is not the green wire. You got fooled. Of course it's not a green wire. Come on. It's that one going to the pin on the tube there. With this red red wire which is heading out to the uh, speaker output transformer okay well that cathode resistor just looks shot to me uh, it's a very old style and it could easily be open if it's open then there's nothing happening in this radio so let's put an ohmmeter across that piece of ugly resistor now can I have to look with my real eyes I think I can get the I think I can get the whole meter on it. Typically a resistor like that should be 200, 400 ohms, something something in that range. Resistor. Oh my gosh, how am I gonna do this? The other end, I just can barely see it right in here. Well, we're getting a reading, aren't we? I think this is the terminal I can get on. 333 ohms. Now maybe it's supposed to be 150 and it's gone up to 330 and that's why we're getting the uh, what appears to be excessive bias. 333. I really can't change the resistance of that without uh, I'm not sure. Well, sometimes these things are written in here. Let's see if my let's see if it's got it in here. Plate dissipation, typical operation. Plate resistance, load resistance, typical push-pull operation. That's interesting. The uh, grid number one voltage in push-pull goes up to minus 25. It's higher yet. Cathode bias. Fixed bias. Oh, fixed bias. Okay, cathode biased. Uh, they just have a dash there. Um, cathode bias resistor. 400 ohms. 400 ohms. Oh, that just blows my theory out of that. It just... It's 
333, I'm expecting it to go high from this typical value of 400. So I'd be expecting 800 to 1,000 or something in there. 333, it sounds like that's probably the correct resistance. Boiled again. Okay, it might just... pretty high voltage with the radio running on restricted supply, which means the B plus is actually way low of where it should be. Consequently, this voltage I'm measuring at 35 volts is way low of where it would be if I ran the radio on full power. That 35 would go up. It'd be minus 40, minus 50, who knows. For sure, that's driving these tubes into cutoff, which will make them silent and no conduction through them. Well, I don't know that for sure. I don't know that for sure. If the highest bias on a tube is typically minus 20, then, then probably it's ready for a voltage signal input as much as double that, 40, 40 volts peak to peak. Yeah, it's not adding up. The uh, bias just seems to be way out of whack on this radio. Found the schematic. This is the best I can do. It's a different radio. It's the KL70, KL76 models, also known as the RCA A25 and A38. Um, but these are all uh, single-ended amplifiers. They have one tube, whereas this radio has two in push-pull, and I cannot find a schematic showing the output of this radio. So if we, this is the best we got. So if I go with this and I take a look, yes, there's a cathode resistor for the one tube, and it's a 390 ohm uh, resistor. No doubt it's a fairly high wattage one. And it's bypassed by a large capacitor, 20 microfarads. It's not going to be that little paper thing I was pointing at. Almost certainly there's a wire. Almost certainly it's here, actually. A wire that runs from one of the terminals on the... Uh, big capacitor, big filter capacitor down to here. Those big filter capacitors come quite often with three sections, two for the power supply and one to act as the bypass capacitor on the output. If the output, if the bypass capacitor is weak, uh, it, it's only going to quiet the radio's operations. You have to turn the volume a little higher. And it might change its tonal qualities a little bit, but it's not going to stop it from operating. Not like it, not like this radio. So I don't think there's a problem necessarily with the bypass capacitor. We've already measured the resistor at 330 ohms. You see this one uh, rated at 390 ohms for one tube. So if you put two tubes and you got two tubes worth of current coming at it, then you'd think the cathode resistor that's being shared by the two tubes would be half the size, double the current, get get back to the same voltage across it. But because this is in push-pull, you actually do want to bias the tube higher uh, to make it function properly in a push-pull arrangement. So, it, you know, it's all kind of making sense. It sounds like that resistor is the right size or close enough that it cannot be held responsible for what's happening. Yet, the tube's bias is way high in my, in my uh, perspective here. So, you know, I got, I got two stories here that don't go together. High bias cathode resistor looks okay. They don't go together. And I really don't want to do more until I get something coming out of the speaker and I don't know what to do at this point. No schematic to be sure. I've got the cathode resistance situation understood properly. What are the chances when I measure the resistance? I wasn't really measuring the resistance of that cathode resistor. Uh, let's see. It's by it's it's basically going from the chassis normally from the chassis to the tube uh, cathodes, and with the set off, there's no current flowing in there. There's no there's no when I put the ohm meter, the only place the ohm meter current can flow is through that resistor. It's, it can't go through the tube, and even if it did leak through the bypass capacitor, I mean we'd be talking about a tiny leak here that wouldn't affect this measurement anyway, but if it did, 
it would make the resistor appear lower. It would make the resistor appear lower. Hmm. Hmm. Can you have the capacitor so leaky? You know, I don't know the answer to that question. I can't say I've ever really been, you know, taking an ohmmeter and testing electrolytic capacitors uh, after discovering they're leaky. They're all a little bit leaky, by the way. Okay. So I should get the same resistance reading to the top of that capacitor. It's just a wire going to the resistor. Three, 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 three. So that's definitely what's going on. The third section of the big capacitor is uh, the bypass part. Jeepers creepers. Um, it's an easy test point, by the way. I just realized easy test point to look for uh, the cathode bias voltage level. Um, what if there's something wrong with the voltage going to the to the screen? Um, 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 um. What if just running this set on such low voltage is causing the tubes to behave in an unexpected manner? Um, so I'm getting this high bias reading simply because I got the radio working uh, on low voltage. That's not very likely. No screen voltage. What happens if you have no screen voltage? Uh, there's two tubes here. Of course, they share probably share the screen voltage supply. Um, what if that's open somehow? There's often a resistor in the screen circuit and that resistor takes a bit of a beating. There's a fair bit of current in the screen circuit. So. Uh, screen voltage. Is there really? Yeah, there is a screen in here. Screen voltage. Why don't we check that? Why don't we check that? 6K 6K6, the screen. Pin 4. And the plate, pin 3. 4 and 3. 4 and 3. Okay. Let's fire up the radio here. this other meter. I actually have the wire connected here. <laughs> let me let me put it somewhere else. So. Down here out of the way. Mr. Short term memory here. Next time I'm going to go in for surgery, I'm going to say to the surgeon, so uh, so what do you do to avoid all the mistakes I make when I do my stuff? What do you do? And I won't want to hear his answer. Um, yeah, five, five, four, and three. Five. So four is the screen. There we go. Let's first check the uh, eight, seven, six. Five, four. Hey, something was missing there. Okay, so I'm on the 150 volt scale on the meter. I go one, two, three, four. This is pin four. Pin four has a weak, weak voltage on it. 40 volts. Pin, pin four, pin five. Six is empty. Pin seven. Nothing. Pin eight. Pin eight was the cathode. The cathode's at thirty volts, and the plate. Where to go? The plate is at forty volts. That just doesn't. That doesn't make sense at all. 
in this one here. Have I got this right? Have I got this right? Because I'm seeing zero screen voltage. I should stop closing my book here. Screen is four. Screen is four. One, two, three. Oh. One, two, three, four. This is the screen. The screen is the one with the voltage on it. What the heck am I doing? So there's the plate. Okay, let's just shake your head there. Plate's got 50. Screen's got 40. Cathode's got 30. Now we go to the other two. Plate is 30. The screen is 40. And I really can't get at that cathode. Um, 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 um. It's really, really low plate voltage. Really low. Am I reading this right? 150 volt scale, 40 volts. With restricted current. Let me turn it off for a second. I'm going to test it at full, full power voltage, but I don't want to... Uh, be holding the test lead when I do that. Okay, so that's right on the filter capacitor. 150 volt scale. It should go right on scale. I'm going to restrict it. Must have still been some heat in the rectifier. Up to 50 and falling to 40. Now I'm going to put this on full power. Jumped a little bit there. A little did 80 volts. Take it off. That's not right, is it? I think I may just fiddle around like this forever and never really sort out anything with this radio with all these bad capacitors in it. Is that applause I hear coming from the viewers? Uh, do I hear applause? Maybe there's so many bad things going on in here, I'm just never ever going to be able to resolve anything without uh, getting busy on these capacitors. So, can't explain much of anything about how this radio is working, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do these paper capacitors that are all around the output tube area here. And try to do the ones that affect the audio signal, so it would be the capacitors are related to the detector tube and everything past that. I'm pretty sure it's just these right in here. And we'll see. We'll see if that brings it to life. Uh, still uncomfortable with this radio that there's something bigger or wrong with it. You know, I got hurt on the low opta radio I did a little while ago. <laughs> did a long journey to find out it had a big dead end at the end of it. I hope this isn't happening here. Anyway, that's it much as I can get to now. Hey, thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next video.